Mr. President, I stood here on our first session day this year on a matter of privilege sounding the alarm for the climate. I wish to take this opportunity to reiterate the changing climate threatens our very way of life, including our heritage. It is for this reason we need changes in our heritage law, now almost 14 years old, to include what we missed and to address new threats from a fast-changing cultural landscape brought about by a digital tidal wave. And I do this in February, which is Arts Month. Since we passed Republic Act number 10066, or the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009, I believe I co-sponsored and co-authored the measure, and Senator mm -hmm. Sunny Angara was the principal author mm -hmm. in the House of Representatives. Yes, we have a good record of preserving important cultural properties, but still, we have lost quite a number of structures. The collective experience of its implementation has led the cultural agencies to protect, preserve, conserve, and promote the nation's cultural heritage, its property and histories, and the ethnicity of local communities to establish and strengthen cultural institutions and protect cultural workers and ensure their professional development and well-being, to band together, to seek the necessary changes we're asking for in this bill. To further strengthen heritage conservation in our country, this bill seeks to mandate local government units to conduct a cultural heritage mapping of their areas for both tangible and intangible and natural and built heritage. The proposed amendments aim to harmonize the relationships between the cultural agencies and update definitions and coverages, taking into consideration laws and regulations since the original law was enacted in 2009. The proposal aims to be more sensitive to intangible cultural heritage, including heritage in the performing arts, as well as audiovisual and broadcast heritage. The proposal also includes a provision that will protect visual sight lines. The reclassification of terminologies also includes the classification of intangible cultural heritage listed in the UNESCO register as grade one cultural properties. The same is true for properties listed in the UNESCO Memory of the World register. The Film Development Council of the Philippines as the agency mandated to administer the Philippine Film Archives under RA 9167 and Administrative Order 26 is made responsible for heritage in film and broadcast arts. The institutionalization of culture mapping is sought as a way to make heritage an inclusive tool for local and national development. In particular, cultural mapping employs a grassroots approach that empowers local communities to identify and assign cultural values to properties, both intangible and tangible, built and movable, cultural and natural, that are important to them. The proposed amendments assign local government units as the lead in conducting comprehensive cultural mapping activities in their respective areas. Meanwhile, the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, the NCCA, together with other culture agencies are mandated to provide technical and financial assistance to LGUs to comply with the cultural mapping mandate. In addition to tangible cultural properties, the following are also considered as covered by cultural mapping mandate. A, heritage crops, products, technologies, agricultural heritage systems, food sources, and natural and non-traditional fibers. B, natural heritage sites, including national parks, habitats of endemic species, unique biodiversity, and cultural landscapes. C, natural dyes, traditional textiles and apparel materials, designs, techniques, 
processes and machines, D, traditional medical practices and medicinal formulations, and E, indigenous knowledge systems, skills, and practices. NCCA's experience in working with local government units show the importance of a participatory approach in cultural preservation as a way to address issues on community consent and feedback that often comes from a centralized outside looking in perspective in heritage management. The Philippine Registry of Cultural Properties was earlier mandated under Section 14 of the National Cultural Heritage Act. This is operationalized at the local level by the submission of local cultural inventories by LGUs. Based on an agreement between the NCCA and DILG, the submission of LCIs is now included in the criteria to qualify for the seal of local good governance. As of December 22, 980 of the 1,715 LGUs have complied with the submission of LCIs. The total number of properties registered with the pre-COP, including those registered by the cultural agencies, is 10,385. On November 25, 2022, I'm happy to note the province of Antique, my home province, which I represented for three years during the pandemic, completed its culture mapping. It was done in partnership with the NCCA, University of the Philippines, Visayas, and the Department of Education. Culture and history experts are teachers of our dear province who hailed from various elementary and secondary schools of the municipalities of Antique as culture mappers. And this representation was a member then of the House of Representatives. Nakakatuwa po, nung naka-lockdown po tayo sa panahon ng pandemia, Zoom po ako ng Zoom. Dahil natuto po ako mag-Zoom. Low-tech me, naturuan ng Zoom, wala pong ubus ang aking creativity at ang boses at pinagagawa. Napaka-excited po ako, natuto ako mag-Zoom. Kaya po, zinuzoom ko <laughs> ang mga magsasaka, ang mga fisher folks, ang mga teachers, ang mga katutubo, ang mga mayors, ang mga kapitan, lahat po dahil po sa lockdown. At naging matagumpay po ang ating pagzuzoom kasama po ang UP Visayas na nagsaga po sa aking kakulitan at trinain po ang ating mga guro na maging culture mappers. Kaya sa panahon ng pandemya, this is a mental health issue as well. Naging prolific at creative po at imbis po tayo'y malungkot at malugmok sa frustration at hirap, ay ang dami po nilang homework ng tatlong taon. <laughs> Naka 21 hard copy books po na pinapatakbo ko sa taas. I hope aabot. The 21 volume compendium record Antique's rich heritage and significant research material. I know the, the city of San Juan has this and may do it. The province of Bulacan, how interesting. If the, if Bukawe can have a culture mapping. Nung bata po ako, naalala ko, basaan. Nung Hulyo, sumasakay ako ng bangkang malaki sa tiyohing kong taga Bulacan. Sa Cagayan de Oro at Misamis Oriental, sigurado ako, meron namang culture mapping at magandang uh, magsagawa sa Capiz uh, ren magandang gumawa at siyempre sa iba't ibang lugar, lalo na sa autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. So this proposed amendment also includes stipulations on compliance with the Data Privacy Act of 2012, as well as a requirement for prior consultation with indigenous cultural communities. Mahalaga po na meron tayong paalam sa ICC. Kasama ko po ang isang Gamaba Awardee sa letratong yan, uh, si Mr. Caballero, na kumanta dito at nag-perform nung aking una o pangalawang termino na siguro wala po po kayong lahat nung 1998, meron ba akong kasama nun, o nung 2004. Yan, yan po si Mr. Caballero at ang mga taga-kalinog, ilo-ilo na panay bukid nun 
na indigenous peoples group na nagperform po dito. Sana'y maimitahan ko nang muli at isa po sila sa higit sa isang daan mga IP groups na siyang hinihinga natin ng FPIC. Napakahalaga free, prior, and informed consent. Pag tayo po'y sumusuot ng iba't ibang gamit na disenyo po nila ay sana po yung mga gumagawa ay pinaalam. Alam natin, pero ibang issue po ito na ibang mga bansa ay nagnanakaw na lang ng intellectual property at disenyo ng ating mga katutubo. But that's a different matter altogether. Cultural heritage value is bestowed by society. Hence, it is a decision that is attended by agreement. Yan naman po ay sa Cordillera sa Ifugao. We need a level of consensus as well to how a society values itself and the shared experiences that make our society a cohesive one. These values include historical accounts that connect us with our shared past and provide continuity, symbolic value that lends power and meaning to our identity, spiritual value that gives sanctity and transcendence, transcendence, aesthetic value for simple pleasure and inspiration, and social value that makes us a cohesive whole, promotes connectedness to reduce conflict and tension. I really believe, Mr. President, if we know our culture well, both natural and built, movable, tangible and intangible, I believe that there will be less tension and conflict. We may be different, but it is our differences that binds us as a people and as a nation. For these reasons, I propose that heritage values, including intangible cultural property and natural heritage must be held up for greater public appreciation and collective concurrence. Duna kina iya kag para nubluyon. A cultural inventory of the province of Antique, significant intangible cultural heritage, volume one. We have to ensure that these resources are accessible. Na hindi lang tayo tayo po ang nagkakaintindihan po dito. Na baka naman iba sa atin, sabi, ano pinagkasabi pa ng senador na itong pinaka-senior dito uh, sa cultural heritage. At para makita ng lahat, ang diferensya ng built at saka ng movable at ng natural at ng intangible at tangible, hindi ba? Yung kinain nating uh, pansit o yung ating tinatanim na halaman, o yung ating medicinal herb, o yung kantang narinig natin sa radyo, sa transistor radio, o yung gong na plinay sa isang lugar. Lahat yan ay may ibig sabihin, pati yung ating uh, sulat. Tignan po nyo sa aking tanggapan. Uh, nung bumisita si Senator Robin Hood at si Senator Rafi Tulfo, tinanong ano ba yung script yan ay baybayin. At bisitahin natin ang baybayin gallery sa National Museum. Ilan lang po yan sa mga parte ng ating intangible heritage. Dahil nga intangible, hindi po mahawakan, hindi makita, pero parte po ng ating kaalaman. So, we must make all of this accessible, shared. Gusto ko sana, dahil hindi naman ako maalam sa vlogging. Yung mga may 25 million ditong followers, gaya ni Senator Tulfo, at yung million-million ni Senator Robin Hood, ay sana mapag-usapan ito at ilabas po natin ang kahalagahan ng abaka gaya ng tinatal, yung tinalak pong nakasuot sa aking katawan po ngayon at marami pang iba. So it's not just beauty. It is more than just beauty and inspiration. It is a deeper meaning of the processes that goes with it, of the thoughts, of the history, of the knowledge. So we must preserve it to undertake wide-scale culture mapping. And who knows, we will realize that we are the wealthiest nation in Asia and in the world. And I believe we are one of. Hindi man tayo may archaeological sites gaya ng Egypto. Hindi man tayo gaya ng New York City o Paris na madalas puntahan ng ating mga Pilipinong gustong mag-tour. Pero ang 
yaman po ng ating intangible at tangible heritage ay hihigit pa sa maraming kultura. This bill aims to allow multiple agencies to bring this about, especially when threatened by climate change and biodiversity loss. Our heritage values must be protected as a source of our connectedness and resilience to help us get through the direst times in unison using the best available means that promote our interrelation. Cultural values are not fluff. I will be offended if they say arts and culture is fluff. No, cultural values is who we are as a people. We are not luxury. No, we are grassroots, community-based, community-driven. They are definitely not soft. Sabi, ah, soft issues. Nako, hindi po. Malalim po ito. Nor are they the first to be sacrificed in the first of trial. That's why I proved, I tried to prove that during times of trial, like the pandemic, we were able to come up with something productive like the cultural mapping. Kasi po, ang ginagawa ng iba sa gobyerno, pag merong trials ang ating bansa, ang unang titigbakin, sinagong salitang ginamit ko, o tatanggalin, ah, yung mga soft, yung mga fluff, Yung ganito, yung ganyan, sa NCCA, sa KWF, o sa NHCP, hindi po yun fluff, hindi po yun, yan po ay parte ng ating pagkatao. So they are in fact our bridge to each other and to the other side of this twin crisis. What are these twin crises? You know me so well and you know this so well, Mr. President. Climate and biodiversity loss and our sustainable pandemic recovery. And I am grateful to those who co-authored the measure, will co-sponsor the measure, and even without co-sponsorship and co-authorship, your support will go a long way in trying to bridge the gap among the 108 million Filipinos in the whole archipelago of 30 million hectares and beyond. We are the ties that bind. Thank you, Mr. President.